As a director, I am looking for people who can be artists, creative artists in their own right. People who can stand up and own a stage and talk to audiences, tell audiences stories, draw audiences in, and who are really painters of space, who are greedy for space. Hello, I'm Colin Connor, Artistic Director of the Limon Dance Company. So the dance pre de New York, I think, is a wonderful, wonderful possibility for dancers. Yes, it's a competition, and I'm sure every other artist you're hearing talking about the nature of competition says the same thing. It is really wonderful dancers are always in competition, and if they're in competition, mostly they're in competition with themselves. And the idea is that you're challenged by the people around you, you're inspired by the people around you. You're inspired by all these different teachers that will come in. You're inspired by the kind of people who will be responding to the dancing that you're doing. All of these things are actually more important, far more important, than first, second, third place. So we're always after having both the ability to have chops, the ability to do what is being asked with clarity, and precision, but also to have active individuality so that we see it as not, we don't want to see anybody dance because they're being told to dance. We want to see everybody dance from their own drive. The Limon Dance Company was created in 1946 by Jose Limon and using his mentor, Doris Humphrey, as the artistic director, which for me is amazing that he was not, he was not what it was about, it was the work that it was about. And Doris Humphrey, who was his mentor, he really trusted her to help him craft things in the best possible way. Jose Limon was a Mexican-American immigrant, so he lived as a Mexican-American immigrant in the United States. A lot of his work deals with the feeling of being an outsider and the feeling of community and the challenges between those two. His, his company was the first dance company to travel under the auspices of the State Department and the first modern dance company to perform at Lincoln Center. The Limon Dance Company has performed at the White House. We were actually just at Jacob's Pillow where we did a performance of a piece called Chacon, and we were able to incorporate a video of Chacon that was created in 1948 on the same stage that we were performing in, which was really just a fantastic privilege and gave us a real sense that we are moving through time. Lamone's own work has always been admired not only for the musical vitality and the visual clarity, but also for the social awareness that he had that went beyond any particular group, but really talks about how we all search for community in one way or other. This was particularly important to him as a Mexican-American immigrant, and I think this sense that, that he wanted to portray how all of us function both in a group and as individuals was very, very important and thematically was continuous in all of his work. Jose Limon was one of the first teachers at the Juilliard School. Um, so he was really part of the, the beginnings, the inception of modern dance in this country. All of the work that he created is both modern, I think, it was very much contemporary in its time, but it also is classical. He always had a sense of the past for himself. He would use Shakespeare, Beethoven. He was always standing and collaborating with those great artists of before and the sense that it was all universal. So some of his pieces, for instance, like The Exiles, is about uh, the expulsion from the Garden of Eden, but it's also really about every refugee couple, immigrant couple, who we see right now. Jose Limon loved movement and he loved expressiveness. He himself was known as a dancer before he was known as a choreographer. And he danced with passion 
an abandon, and always an incredibly clear sense of intention, a clear sense of purpose of what was happening to this human on the stage. With his dancers, he was always creating, and he created movement very, very quickly, and he really allowed them to have a sense of expression themselves. He really created with them as creative artists themselves. So you would hear very often, he would only have one thing that he would say to somebody over and over again, and then at the same time giving them a lot of room to keep developing what they were doing with that part. He created works with very, very different kinds of dancers. I think he was attracted to very different kinds of dancers. One of his most famous pieces, The Moors Pavan, was created with Lucas Hoving, who was a Kurt Yost dancer, European trained, with Pauline Kohner, who was already a great dancer in her own right, and with Betty Jones, who was also a great dancer in his own right. So he liked the idea of difference coming together to make really great art. So the Humphrey Lamone technique has evolved since it began and continues to evolve. And I think a lot of the way it's evolving is it is evolving to serve dancers of our time. So, for instance, there are things about musicality that were really taught about making sure you could be exactly on the music at the right time. Now, I think it's wonderful to approach it as how are you in relation to this other element? How are you re in relation to a violinist and what they're making in terms of sound, what you're doing in terms of movement? How is that talking? And so it's how do we create that level of intimacy? And it's something that is inherent, I think, in the way ballet is taught. It's perhaps not as inherent in the way some contemporary techniques are taught at the moment. So we're also responding to what skills people have and what really needs to be encouraged to widen and to deepen the skills that dance can bring forward. It is always using weight. It's always using this greed for space, this sense of opposition that every movement depends on opposition the same way every play depends on having an opposition of desires. It's always working with breath which is again always going on. It's always working with the sense of pulse and how we manipulate that sense of pulse. So all there are different elements that are really elements in every dancing, but we actively use them as lenses to help people have their dancing have both clarity but also abandon. At Limon, the educational arm, we have professional studies programs where what we're focusing on is helping dancers move from studio, from university, from high school, to being able to own their own artistry. So, for instance, in these professional studies programs, we will have courses where we're working just on performance technique. How can you take the things you know how to do as a dancer and actually apply them to this role or that role and really develop it so that all of a sudden we start seeing something that perhaps we've never seen by anybody else doing that same material. And these are the things that I think help each dancer become a dancer that can be valuable to the dance world around them. I myself uh, have been a teacher for a long time. I was on faculty at the Juilliard School at NYU, and I was full-time faculty at the California Institute of the Arts for 15 years, where I was also the director of student professional development. And that's, I think, one of the things that's making us relook at our own educational programs and redirect them toward helping dancers who are almost there become professionals? And how do we help them unleash the skills they have? How do we help them own the skills that they have and really direct them for themselves so that they can go from being really good students to being artists who can work with wonderful choreographers? So a lot of that is not telling people what they should be doing, but helping them understand the things that they should be looking at, the things that they should be making decisions about, making choices about, keeping up in the air so that they can be responsive to other dancers. A lot of it is helping them not feel like someone else is the final arbiter, 
Someone else might be the person who's telling them, yes, you need to do this, but for their dancing, they need to be the final arbiter. They need to be the artist of their artistry. The Limon Dance Company, from its inception, was a repertory dance company. It was all about not only these classic works created by Jose Limon and Doris Humphrey, but also about the kind of works that people were making in their time. And we are reinvigorating that at the moment where we're doing new works by people like Kate Ware, uh, Francesca Harper, Adam Baruch, Rosie Herrera, these people who, who are really creating work now and responding to the world around them right now. What it also means is that the dancers we have right now are real artists. They're able to collaborate with very, very different people. They're able to do work that is classic and has been done by a lot of different people, but they're also able to be in the process of creating new work with very, very different kinds of choreographers. So they have to be very nimble and they really have to have, they really have to have chops. They really have to be able to do very, very different things and make different worlds on stage. For me as a choreographer, I've worked with all sorts of dancers. And as a choreographer, when you're trying to say something, the tools that you're using can be very, very different, and you can still say the same thing, the same way as a painter might do an etching, or might do an oil paint, or might do some sort of sculpture, or something with found objects. There's an intention, and you're using those things to make that happen. Dancers are dancers, whether they're ballet dancers, African dancers, modern dancers, contemporary dancers, flamenco dancers. And I think it all comes from this urge to move and this urge to make movement speak in some way or other. So always there has been a lot of cross-pollination between ballet and contemporary. There has been Yuri Killian, who obviously learned a great deal from American modern dance. There's been Billy Forsyth, who went over to Europe and completely changed the way ballet was happening there. Um, Limon's work are performed by ballet companies all around the world. And I think ballet dancers are being trained in different ways. I think ballet dancers value the ability now to have other things that they can bring to the table. In the same way that modern dancers now have technical skills and the ability to be technically more athletic than dancers did many, many years ago. And all of this means that there is an incredible, the, the lines are not fixed. It's very, very porous, the things that happen between one genre and another. So ballet dancers need to be able to do contemporary, need to be able to do modern, but modern dancers also need to have skills that come with ballet. I think early on, for me, what I was interested in is how we can make complete worlds on stage that we can believe in and that audiences can believe in. So even the act of dancing for me had something akin to the act of choreography. I'm very pleased that I have a company of dancers who not only look very different, who not only come from very different backgrounds, but a company where the dancers think differently about dancing. They're probably dancing for different reasons, each one of them, which means they each bring their own unique personal approach. And that's what I'm looking for in hiring dancers. I want to see somebody who is actually going to bring something fresh, who's going to be somebody who can help bring work of Jose Limon, of Doris Humphrey, of my work, but also of new choreographers, Chore dancers who can bring work to life. The Limon Dance Company is performing March 21st and 22nd at Aaron Davis Hall, up very close to our studios in Harlem. And we'll be doing one program there and a very, very different program at the Joyce Theater, which goes from May 28th to June 2nd. These are great works. The Limon works, the Doris Humphrey works, are real classics, and they can be looked at like Shakespeare. They can be looked at in fresh ways. They can be given fresh productions that don't take away from an original production, but they actually give other perspectives, and they keep it alive. 
They keep it moving forward. So we have, for instance, done performances of the Exiles that really hone to what Jose Limon would have done in terms of costuming, in terms of production values. And I think even in terms of performance, because when he would work with people, he would just change things. A piece that existed, if he had new dancers, he would always change something, things inside it, because the whole idea was it was going to be about the performance of those performers making this work come alive. And then we've done a production of The Exiles where we had different music, we had different costumes, and it was designed to make the performance more obviously talking to our time, our time of immigrants and refugees. And I believe that's what his work has the capacity to do, and that's what much classic dance work has the possibility to do in the same way that classic theater work does. So my perspective as a director is, how can I, how can, I, how can we be speaking to audiences of today? and making sure that the work is alive for those audiences today.